Okay, this is for response question number two. It's going to be a solution stoichiometry problem with a limiter, or at least a stoic problem with a limiter. And here's example question number one. So step number one in doing these types of problems is to write the balanced chemical equation. And so we have Al2S3 plus H2O goes to AlOH3 plus H2S. And so to balance this equation, we're going to need a 2 in front of here to get us 6 hydroxides. And then we're going to need a 3 right here to get us the 3 sulfurs that we need right here, which means we'll need a 6 in front of the H2O right here to get us the correct number of H's and OH's on this side right here. Okay, step number 2 is to go to moles. And so we have 316 grams of aluminum sulfide. And notice it has four sig figs right here. So we're going to try to stick with four sig figs here and four sig figs here throughout. I neglected to put the point zero here, but I'll bring it back in in a second. So when I add up uh, two aluminums and three sulfurs on the periodic table, I get 150 grams. So some people might want to know where I got those numbers. Aluminum right here is 27 times 2, and then sulfur is 32. And of course, I had to multiply that by 3 and get 150. And so that's going to convert to moles right here for my amount of aluminum sulfide. And then I also need to convert my water, which is 493.0 grams of H2O, and in one mole of H2O, I'll put my aluminum sulfide up here so everybody knows that's what I converted to, there are 18 grams, and so there's one for each water, and then there's 16 for oxygen, and if you forgot where that came from, oxygen right here is 16, and hydrogen of course is 1. So 316 divided by 150 gives me 2.11. Uh, to two, we'll just do this number of sig figs to get to our next part right here. And 493 divided by 18 gives me 27.4. And now since I have an amount of both reactants, I need to determine the limiter. And the quick, easy, dirty way to do that is to divide by the coefficient. And so the coefficient here is 1, and the coefficient here is 6. And you don't actually have to do this math if you can just tell which is going to be smaller. But if you can't tell for sure, then go ahead and do it on your calculator. You know, this will end up being 2.11, and 27.4 divided by 6 ends up being 4.56. So this one ends up being the smaller one, and therefore this is our limiter. And so answering question letter B right here, determine the limiting reagent, this would be showing my work right here. And then the smaller one, the one that's going to be used up first, is my limiter. So Al2S3 limits. So going back here, this was letter A. This is the answer to letter B right here. And now we're on to letter C, where it says calculate the amount of hydrogen sulfide gas. So this is what I want to know. That's my unknown thing. And this is how much I um, have to start with of my limiter. So use my limiter, and so I'll use 2.11 moles of Al2S3, put a multiply sign, put a line, put Al2S3 in a position where it's going to cancel. And then on top, I want to know it says calculate the amount of hydrogen sulfide gas produced. So this right here, so I put H2S on the top. There's a 3 in front of H2S, and there's a 1 in front of the Al2S3. And so uh, it just says amount right here. It doesn't say whether it should be grams or moles, and on the final, I'm sure it would be much more specific, but this is going to produce 2.11 times 3, or 6.330 moles of H2S to 4 sig figs. Now, if it wanted to know grams, uh, it, it says uh, uh, I could convert this from moles to grams, by taking 6.330 moles of H2S, and that would be converting to the asked for units right here. Put grams in a position where it's going to cancel moles as my new set of units. Add this up on the periodic table, 
sulfur, of course, is 32, and then uh, uh, hydrogen is uh, 1, so it would be 34 grams in one mole. And then I'd do that on my calculator where I'd do 6.33 times 34, and I'd get 215 grams. So if we asked for grams, that would be my last step to do right here, converting to ask for units. If it asked just for moles, I would have left it right there. Okay, then letter D says, what mass of the excess reactant remains? So water is my excess reagent because I had more of it. I found that out at the beginning after I divided by the coefficient. And so to find out how much water is actually going to be used, I start with my limiter. So start with my 2.11 moles of Al2S3. And now compare it or do a mole-to-mole -mole ratio between the Al2S3 and the water because I want to know how much water is actually going to be used. There's a 6 in front of the H2O. There's a 1 in front of the Al2S3. So this tells me how many moles of H2O are actually going to be used up. So let's go ahead and do this on my calculator. 6 times 2.11, and of course I get 12.66. Okay, now it doesn't ask in the question what mass of the excess is used. It says how much remains. So now I need to find the difference between the amount that I started with and the amount that I'm actually going to have used up. And in math class, when you find the difference, you find you do subtraction. So 27.4 moles minus 12.66. 27.4 minus 12.66. Enter 14.74 moles of H2O remain. Okay, that's not used up. That's in excess. And it asks for what mass of this excess remains. So now once I've done this mole ratio and done my subtraction right here, I have to convert to the ask for units. And so there are 18 grams in one mole of water. So I take that 14.74 and then multiply that by 18. And I have 265.3 grams of H2O that remain. Lastly, it says 200 grams of hydrogen sulfide were actually produced. Calculate your percent yield. So my percent yield is equal to my actual 200 grams divided by my theoretical. Theoretically, back here in letter C, I'm going to produce 215.2 grams. And then I multiply that by 100%, and it's going to tell me my percent yield. So 200 divided by 215.2. And then I multiply that by 100, and I'm going to end up with 92.94% to uh, four sig digs. So I would have had to multiply this by 100 to get that yet. I didn't do that part, but you can see that I'm going to end up with 92.94% yield. Okay, that's the middle problem, example problem number one.